There are thousands of DOS games. Most of them are terrible. I play one selected at random with a 20 minute time limit and record it live. This is the result. Microprose presents a truly outstanding game. We finally made it. Game 100 World Circuit. The Grand Prix Race Simulation. This is the American version, also known as Formula One Grand Prix in the UK. And this is one of the best intros ever. Wasn't that wonderful? I think that was wonderful. You should hear it on MT32, it's even better. But uh, I'm playing with the Sound Blaster because I like the engine noises on the Sound Blaster better. And in case you didn't notice, um, I've played this game before. And uh, that is a rendition of uh, Fleetwood Mac, the chain, in the background I do believe. So, let's start. And the game will accost us. World Circuit. Manual Protection. Let's bypass that by hammering on the keyboard. Joystick selected. I don't think so. We want to use our keys to control our Formula One racer car. So you've got an option here between Quick Race and Main Menu. Quick Race will just get us straight in and I'll show you the basics. We'll start in Monza. I'll completely mess it up. It'll be good fun. We're Carlos Sanchez. They couldn't use the actual names, but I'll get to that later. The the car colorings and uh, the uh, the lineups, they're good. So I'll start my 20 minute timer and we'll get going. So we're at Monza and uh, I'm just gonna be very careful here. Uh, dropping back positions. Uh, because in Formula One, one of the most dangerous parts is the start of the race and you don't want to ram over cars. Now you'll notice already there's little signs uh, with numbers on them. That tells you the distance to the next corner. So if you're flying along and you start seeing signs going from 400, 300 and if you're still at top speed at 100, you're in trouble. And there's a corner sign, 200, 100, and we'll slow down and just navigate this. Oh, oh, drifted there a bit wide, not great. I'm very rusty at this. You'll also notice that there's a little guideline on the track. And you'll probably pick up on the, uh, the wonderful shaded graphics. You know, there's no ugly texture mapping from the early 90s because that would have looked terrible going at this speed. It would have been a mess. So instead, Jeff Grammond cleverly decided, hey, we just need the basic colors here. The main emphasis is on the engine, you know? That's what we want. It's a, it's a 3D engine, sort of. Uh, it is, I guess, you know, with certain 2D planes. And uh, it's, uh, it's very impressive for its time. And I know it's, it's sort of... Uh, Oh, fastest lap by Robert Davis, whoever that is. Better speed along here. Pick up some speed. Lap time, 142. Not great, but uh, our next lap time will be faster because we didn't have a, you know, standing start. So we'll just uh, ease off. This, this is one thing you'll notice. You know in those uh, various racing games you'd select, you know, computer opposition and so on, and they'd, they'd have somebody like... Uh, speedy you know and it, it would always say hey he's great on the straights but he's terrible at cornering and it would be some sort of mid-tier opposition that is basically me when it comes to straights I'm absolutely lethal but uh, cornering not so good 
And one of the problems with Formula One and this Monza track is that there's a lot of cornering involved. And you can hear the nice purr of our engine. And uh, you'll also note, see at the, uh, the bottom near the revs per minute, everything is turned on. Those are your auto assists. So I'm not actually changing gears. I'm actually fighting the game's auto braking system. I'm trying to prevent somebody overtaking me there. I, I warded him off. You, you can see in your mirrors where people are approaching and uh, you just need to sort of ease off and uh, move in the direction that they're headed just to sort of head them off. There's also a yellow line that you saw there. That's the pit stop. If your tires are wearing out or your fuel's a bit low, a Formula One car needs a pit stop. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll not demonstrate that right now. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the basics. I'm probably not going to overtake any of these computer players because I quite literally barely have control of my car. Um, it really is, it's almost like a tech demo. And the controls are A, Z, and then you've got the two sort of uh, triangular brackety things. I, I can't remember what their names are. They're next to the question mark on your keyboard. You know, shift question mark, and then you have those brackets. They steer left and right. And uh, space to select things, like say if you're doing a practice lap and you want to do uh, select tires and stuff. Look at this. It's two teammates attempting to overtake each other. That's, that's not good. Let's just... Uh, Involve ourselves there and jump up to fourth. <laughs> that was uh, that was a bit cheeky on my part. Um, I, I did a uh, bit, bit of a shoomy move there, you know, Schumacher. I uh, I bumped wheels of one of the guys while he was trying to overtake his teammate, which he shouldn't have been doing really. And uh, that means we'll get a respectable fourth position, I think, provided we can ward off the attentions of this guy who's trying desperately to oh. No! We get fifth because of that mistake. There we go. And this is one of the really interesting things about Formula One Grand Prix. Like, 90% of it is decided in these split-second decisions. These, like, tiny moments where you're just like, Hey, should I do this? Should I do that? That split-second, because the, the game engine's updated, like, super quick and... Uh, the physics modeling is fantastic. Those split second decisions will cost you if you make a mistake, like going onto the grass. I thought I had that. Uh, let's have a look and it'll give you a breakdown. It's a non-championship race. It's just uh, to show you the basics. So we got Robert Davis and uh, he finished with a time of 4 minutes 37 and uh, there we are, Carlos Sanchez. We were 15 seconds off the pace. Oh dear. I think if we got a better start, we might have been able to, you know, hold him off. So, driver lap time should be interesting. Let's see how our quickest um, compares. There we are at fourth. Uh, with uh, our lap time is 133 and obviously this makes sense I mean it can happen like we'll look down yeah the lap times are largely in order I don't know if that's the position you see the thing is with lap times you can actually have somebody have the fastest lap time in the race and not finish first so I don't know if the place is the fastest lap time like Robert Davis finished first, but he also had the best lap time. I'm not sure about that. Then you've got, uh, fa ah, there we go. So we had driver lap times and fastest lap times. Oh, there you go. There's the actual previous records for this particular fixture. And Erton Senna, the legendary driver for McLaren, holds a record of 1 minute 21. So if we could somehow get a faster lap than that, we'd be impressive. Printer menu. So the print results, you can take a look. Trouble with printer. So what that's basically saying is, hey, if you want to be really nerdy and print out the stuff that's happened 
and have a little binder of all your results and memories and stuff to share with your friends, you can. So we'll continue and instead of a quick race, we'll go to the main menu and we'll just have a quick look at uh, all the things you can do. So we'll start from the top, quick race, you know what that is already, we've demonstrated it. Driver team selection. Here is a really, really interesting part of the game and uh, it blew my mind back in the day. I, I often say that, but it's true. I was a very impressionable young man, young child, whatever. We go to McPherson and we can edit the team name, we can edit the player name, and we can uh, we can do that. It's uh, it's great. So say we want to call ourselves Speedy McSpeeders. Speedy McSpeeder. There's a, there's actually a limit. So you'll note that he is selected, right? That means that Speedy McSpeeder is the uh, the guy that we'll use for quick races and stuff. So selections complete. One driver selected, single player, okay. You have the option to load or save a game. Pretty simple stuff. You can also load and save car setups and names and track records, which is ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous. We've got help options and this is always worth going into. Auto brakes, no. Auto gears. Yes, I don't want to have to change gear. Self-riding spins sounds good to me. Indestructible. Yes. Dotted best line? Nah. Suggested gear? Absolutely. I mean, if it's auto gear and it suggests a gear to us, it'll switch automatically anyway. Then we have practice any circuit. And you've got a series of circuits here from that particular season, including the wonderful Monaco, and you've got San Marino, and so on and so forth. You've got Great Britain, and you know, the, the, the usual stuff. Can't seem to exit out of it, so I'll, uh, I'll just go straight into it. Now, you'll see here, you are given a tire choice. And you'll also note, above our tire choice, that we've turned off some of the aids. So we'll go with C as suggested and hit space. And uh, we'll just take it out for a wee spin. Now, the pit stop is a little different because it'll guide you out. Then after you've, you've been guided out, it's all on you. Left, right, or not braking and smashing into a wall. And uh, when I was a kid, I wasn't particularly good at uh, racing, you know. Uh, I was I was pretty poor at this game to be honest, but uh, one of my great loves was going on this US track in particular. It's why I selected it. And you're probably thinking, well, James, why did you select the US track? Well, dear viewer, the US track doesn't have any grass, as you can see here. And you'd spin off onto the grass. There's the self-riding spin. And you'd spin off onto the grass on other tracks and it would cost you valuable time. With invulnerability on, guidelines off, auto braking off, you could ram yourself into corners, readjust yourself, and then just fight the controls to get back on track. And it would turn from an arcade simulation, or sorry, a simulation into an arcade. Right, we'll avoid that pit stop line. Because if we follow that pit stop line, it'll take us into the pit stop. I'll show that in the next lap. A haphazard lap. And then uh, we'll, we'll do a quick fun race. Complete with me being invulnerable and a complete pain to other drivers. Because they will not be invulnerable. And uh, yeah, this is not really the way the game's meant to be played. It's... Uh, it's absolutely incredible, like the the level of detail and customization. It just was not seen at this time, you know. And I remember some of the publications back in the day, you know, they'd review the race games, you know, the British ones. They'd review the race games and they'd be like, you know, 
yeah, yeah, this is good, this is good, but it's not as good as Formula One Grand Prix, is it? You know, <laughs> that would be it. That would be the reality. Certain games come out, and for a good while, all of our games are just like, right, is this as good? No, it's not. Move on, you know? It's like, why would I be playing this game when there's a superior version just sat there with all these realistic systems? Right, I'm going to try and go pit stop here. Uh, there we go. No, come on. Ah. And this is one of the issues I have with it. And it's, it's probably a me issue, as always. So I'm going to exit out of this. With a pit stop, I... Uh, it tries to guide you in automatically, you know? And if you don't quite hit the line right, or you slow down like an idiot like I did to try and sort of eat it, it'll cause you problems. So, what else can I show you? We've done that. Uh, game options menu. And here we have even more stuff including credits, which is nice. It's always nice to acknowledge who's doing what. So, quick, quick race options. Let's select the US, shall we? Phoenix? Phoenix, Arizona, US? That's the problem. It's, it's going by the track name rather than the, uh, the track itself. I believe it's Phoenix. Car number, group position four. Well, actually, I'm going to stick myself in 26th. Race distance percent will go up to 10% of the actual race and we'll have dry conditions, right? You can do the same with race and you can also change the opposition standard. There's qualifying as well and, uh, you know, various opposition spread. You could have them all the same level, or 1991 levels, or just at random. It's There's so much customization. And here's the best bit. Frame rate. Let's bump it up to 25 instead of 15. Number of turns per player in multiplayer mode. That's right, this had a multiplayer game. Fade speed, set it to fast. And uh, you also have a date for some reason. Control method is self-explanatory, you know. You can edit your controls, bind them to whatever you want. And then you have your startup files, which you can uh, load on start particular drive names or circuit records or setups. Okay, save options. Replace the existing file. And that's done, that's loaded. So, when we go to Quick Race now, it should be, yep, Phoenix, United States. And we can view it. There's a nice little picture giving you a vague, eye, well, a pretty good idea actually, considering it's pixel art, of what you'll be racing. Then you've got the info, and 121 is the qualifying lap time to beat, and 126 by Jean Alesi is the. Uh, Right, speedy McSpeedster. We are just gonna wreck stuff here in the most unsporting fashion and it's gonna be a nightmare for a few minutes because I know I'm gonna run out of time shortly. Go, 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 right. You'll see the frame rates up. Isn't that beautiful? And we are just gonna par on through just like this. And that is the true beauty of World Circuit. Not this arcade nonsense that I'm playing now, because that's not fair. <laughs> and I've wrecked the place. There we go. Right. And I'm in first, and the green flag is being waved. The green flag means, uh, hey, somebody's seriously hurt. Jean-Paul Cassell. I, I'm sorry, Jean-Paul. I, I had to do it to you. So you, you can tell the frame rate is already a lot better. A full 10 frames faster. There may be frame pacing issues, so watch out for that. That means that uh, the game will either artificially insert a frame because your monitor's not running at 50 hertz, or it might miss a frame, you know, or skip out a frame. Usually it's adding a frame, like repainting a frame twice, 
Uh, that's technical nonsense. And we're playing arcade mode. We don't need technical nonsense, aren't we right? Let's quickly get a lap out of the way. Eight laps. Well, the alarm's going to go off before eight laps, isn't it? I just wanted to show uh, possibly the worst sort of uh, demonstration. Right. There we are. 128. But well, that's not where we're going to finish at, trust me. Uh, so, you'll get updates on your little board that will show you who's behind you. And sometimes, I might be mistaken here, I think that might be the second game, I'm not sure. No, there we go. First game shows you how far, in terms of seconds, away that person is. He's a full 21 seconds, so I can make 21 seconds worth of mistakes where I'm spinning or standing still or whatever and uh, I can still get away with it. I feel like an evil villain, you know? I, I rammed, I raced through cars, I, I did everything wrong that you shouldn't do in a Formula 1 game and uh, got off Scott 3. Unfortunately, I am very, very rusty and I'm not even trying really. To, uh, to avoid these little bumpers because they can sort of set me back on track. Right, let's see what sort of time we can get here. Right. There. Ease through the corner. Top speed. 123. It's not quite Ert and Senna, but we're already lapping this poor soul. There we go. Goodbye. <laughs> Green flag. I probably killed him. You do not want to be hit with a Formula One car into the back like that. Poor Robert Davis. Well, that's what you get, Robert, for beating us in the first race. This is revenge. Yeah! Whoa, we spun out on that one. And Langer is now 36 seconds away from me. So, they're not gaining on me. This haphazard driving style... Oh, dear really messed up there. This haphazard driving style, which is totally not in the spirit of a game, which is actually an excellent simulator for its time, is causing all kinds of problems. And there's the alarm. I'll just... Yes, I managed to flick the alarm off, but corner! Oh, I tell you, if I wasn't invulnerable, I'd be in trouble, right? So, yeah, that is Formula One Grand Prix or as the Americans would call it, World Circuit. And I guess, there we go, 127. That's not great, but it'll do. And if you like watching me fly along um, doing racing games, I don't play a lot of them on this. It's entirely selected at random. But there's uh, 99 other videos in this series for you to look at. There's also my long plays, where I play an R of stuff and just have a good time explaining it. And then there's also the Get Off My Lawn series that this channel started with, which is, you know, reviews. Uh, more standard reviews of stuff that I loved. So we'll leave it there. And that was World Circuit, aka Formula One Grand Prix. Great game, great fun. Any enthusiast in racing games from the DOS era should give it a go. Excellent. Cheerio.